Hello everybody, welcome to OCHD and welcome to another Jumputi Heroes predictions video. Today, I've done it a little bit differently. We've kind of done the bingo format before, but this time, sort of a special little bingo, specifically for the fourth anniversary live stream. It was to be assumed that a live stream would be coming, but we have seen a confirmation in the files. A live stream is planned for this anniversary. The anniversary obviously coming up on the 28th, so about a week away. And at this point, we haven't had much information released yet. I would imagine the first bit of information about the countdown should be tonight. Because there's like a week left and then... Uh, and then like, there's, there, I mean, normally they announce this stuff quite early. I think last year they started teasing like two weeks ahead of time. And the current event hasn't got a lot going on at this point. So perfect timing to start releasing little tidbits of info. Maybe it won't be character reveals yet. I don't know, but I want to get this out before that, just in case. And there's lots of possible ways they could go with it. Which way they will go. It's so hard to say because there's so little information to go off of. But what I have compiled here is 25 things, uh, some of which are characters that I might like to see during this event or alluded to at some point during the roadmap. Uh, then there's some stuff in here that's just predictions for what we might see on the roadmap, whether that be character hints, whether that be certain events that we might see or certain series that might be promoted and then a few other little things which is like just miscellaneous stuff we might not see or uh, certain things i'd like to see implemented that might be announced during the live stream uh so we're gonna go through it all and <laughs> we're just gonna see what happens uh there's there's a few in here that i'm not particularly confident on but hey who knows so Let's start off with the characters, because I think that's the easiest place to start. We've got quite a few characters in here. I think we've got 10, 10 characters, potentially, that could take part in this anniversary. Bear in mind, the anniversary last year was in three parts. So it was quite a large event. It, it was like big ensemble event, followed by a little ensemble event, followed by Kimitsu no Yaiba event. And that was all part of the anniversary. So, something something like 10 character picks. Obviously, I'm not expecting all of these to be included, but I've cast a, a wide enough net, but not too wide, and maybe we can get a couple of right. Who knows? Uh, let's start off in the middle with one that, I mean, we've been talking about for a long time, and that is Goldie Roger. I'm still relatively confident that he will be the Muso for this anniversary, Obviously, it's one of those things where we've talked about Roger coming for a very long time and it hasn't happened, but like they have enough source material to make him now. He's appeared in the other gacha games now. Like, okay, with the 0.5 anniversary, they went a different way. They went with Giotto. And I'm hoping that that's, you know, moving forward, the big anniversary, they do the big character. And then the, the, the 0.5 anniversary, they put a character that's maybe a little bit riskier. But then they're accompanied by some, you know, limited and some standard gacha from big series, and it all sort of balances out. I'm, I'm hoping same thing here again, and uh, Roger being the big series, and then maybe a few smaller series sprinkled in in the standard gacha in the events, so on and so forth. Uh, seems like a no-brainer to me. I feel like it's going to be quite a profitable character to add. There are other options for the Muso, of course, and we know we're going to get a Muso. Let's be real. Um, you know, could it be Ging Freaks? Maybe. The only information we have on it is uh, on the Taiwan roadmap, they are referred to as a legendary character or a character of legend, which, I mean, I guess a lot of the Musos are referred to as such, but I took that to mean a character from the past, you know, the one written into history. And Roger works for me in that way and ging freaks doesn't really i mean i guess you could say he's like a legendary hunter or whatever but most people just think of him as the deadbeat dad so for me roger sort of fits it a little bit better and as for other candidates i mean it's gotten really tricky because i think now that we've seen giotto as a muso 
That has opened the doors to a lot more candidates for who could be Musa, because it's not just limited to the hyper popular series, you know, the, the big three and so on. There are more options now. We can look further down the list. Just characters that fit the spec, which is just a character that stands out within the series as being just either super ridiculously powerful or ridiculously important to the story or whatever. Like, Hashirama Senju is just like, obviously, it makes it makes so much sense. He's just such a powerful character from history. Same with Giotto. And then Vegito is the only one that's a little bit different, but like, it kind of makes sense with Vegito as well. And then, and then we've got Roger. I think Roger is is a logical step. He's the logical character to go with next. And to finish off the first batch, bear in mind this is going to be the end of the first batch of Muso. From this point on, who knows what they're going to do? They might have a completely different approach to Musos. It like the possibilities. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? But I think to end the first batch, the final Muso of this batch, the red Muso, I think it should be Roger. And to come along with Roger, young Whitebeard. And this is just, it'd be so good. It would be so good. Because even if you're not going to pull for Roger, having Whitebeard as like the the catastrophe for this event, and you can get an aura costume for him and stuff, that is so good. He's such a perfect character. Loads of people will want to get into 99 Luck and have him as their 99 Luck lead and, you know, limit break him and everything. It, I am one of those people. I will want to limit break him, 100%. So, hopefully, hopefully that's the case. That being said, I am starting to have my doubts as we get closer to the event that it will be Roger and therefore Young Whitebeard won't be coming along. Plus, potentially... They could release Young Roger, or just Roger in general, and he could counter Young Whitebeard, but maybe Young Whitebeard would drop Young Rayleigh or something, and maybe they'd save Young Whitebeard for, like, a separate limited or something later down the line. I don't know. But this showdown, oh my god, this has to be. This has to be in there. Um, next up, a character I predict all the time, Zebra from Toriko. Uh, I feel like we had Sunny during, uh, wait, it was Sunny during third anniversary and then Coco during the, was it the Gourmet Fest or whatever? Like, the, Toriko has had a presence. It's had a presence recently and I have a distinct feeling that at some point there was a Toriko feature festival and it just kind of got dismantled and the characters were sent around to other events to fill gaps and while that is a shame it does mean that surely at this point they must have zebra finished surely if you've got sunny if you've got coco and you've got all those other toriko characters we've got zebra has to be there potentially he could i mean i don't know who he would counter necessarily like he could just counter like a stage with the nitros on it and then that can drop pretty much any character um, you could even have like Tengu Brunch or something like that. There, there are a lot of options, but uh, I mean, I haven't put whichever character he'd be countering on here. I've just put him, and I think lots of people would be very happy to finally see Zebra. Now, in my head, he would be on a standard gacha with another character I've got on here, which is Zora from Black Clover. I'm pretty confident Black Clover will play a role in this event because... The devs have a little bit of bias towards it. Not as much as to some series, which we'll talk about later, but <laughs> certainly there is a little bit of bias, and I feel like this would be a nice time to introduce Zora. In my mind, Zora could counter a free-to-play Asta. We still do not have a free-to-play Asta, you know? We've got free-to-play Tanjiro, free-to-play Deku, Luffy, Goku, um... Who else? Like, well, we just got Gon and Yusuke, Ichigo, like loads of characters. We have a free-to-play protagonist. Maybe they have a limited version. Maybe they have a standard gacha version. I don't know. But you need a free-to-play version to come along. If you're a big series, you've got to get a free-to-play version of the protagonist, in my mind. So having like a transcendent class, Asta, just makes sense to me. And we should have that at this point. 
so why not include him? There could be an argument in this event to add like a free to play. I mean, I guess we have got two free to play Gokus because we've got Luffy Goku and we've got the like first Goku. We don't have like a proper standout decent free to play Goku compared to some of the other characters. So maybe that could come at some point, but I don't know who would count him unless they were going to do like a version two Margin Vegeta, which would go pretty hard and you could have a free to play Goku off of that. But whether they'll do that or not, I have absolutely no idea. So we'll leave that at that. Uh, I think Zora would be a good addition though. And then next up, let's go with... Okay, here's another thing. And I guess these two things are linked, so I'll, I'll put them both up. I've put Sket down here. And I've also put in this. Captain abilities or trio units to be added into the game. Or at least announced during this anniversary. We always get like a, a mascot character for anniversaries. Uh, I think it was Brooke last year. Uh, the year before it was Luffy and Goku. Uh, like, we normally have some kind of mascot character and we just have, we're just coming off the back of an event with a mascot character, which was the um, Yusuke and Gon. And I really like this way of in introducing the character because they, they're given to you during the login bonus or whatever. And a lot of the storyline of what the event's going to be is framed around that character. But then later in the event, normally they will give you some way to farm that character. And I think if you were going to introduce the concept of trio units, I'm not necessarily saying they will, but it's a possibility. They did say they were going to introduce some kind of new type of unit. And they said think duo units. And that could be triple units. That could be versus units. That could be transforming units. There's so many possibilities. It could be something I've never even thought of. Um... But one thing I did think is, if it's a triple unit, this is the logical character to choose. Sketdan, the three members of Sket Dance, as the like free-to-play trio unit. Now that being said, um, I have put in here in the actual roadmap section. I do think we're going to get a Gintama event this year, and I put a feature first of all. But when I was thinking about it more, I did think, you know, these crossover events we've had. Sket Dance and Gintama makes so much sense. And if you were gonna do like a like a free mascot character, you could do like the trio units. Like if they've introduced trio units, you could do like Yorozuya, maybe with Bossun and and uh, Himako and Switch in in the Yorozuya clothes. And then vice versa with Yorozuya in the Sket Dance clothes. That could be really cool. Or maybe just swap one of the characters over. I think that would be pretty good. Um, I do think Gintama's got to get something this year. Whether it will be a feature festival, whether it will be a crossover event. Very hard to say, but Sket Dancers has so little for so long. <laughs> so, a bit of appreciation here. Whether that's the mascot of this event, whether it's in a crossover event, whether it gets its own thing at some point. It'd be nice. And uh, one thing to mention here is some of the stuff I'm predicting here, they won't necessarily say it on the live stream because if the events in three parts they're only going to really talk about part one <laughs> on the live stream so part two and certainly part three we're probably not going to find anything out about they might give us a little tease of part two like maybe by accident they did supposedly by accident leak sunny and rindo last year so it's entirely possible they could you know accidentally leak it um, or they could just straight up tell us. I mean, who knows? But a lot of the stuff I predict, there's a chance that it's not really going to be covered in the live stream. But we'll talk about what happens after the live stream when we get there. Obviously, when that drops, I'm going to have a news video. We're going to talk about the roadmap, everything. It's going to be sick. But anyway, moving on to more characters. Let's talk um, Kensei. Kensei from Bleach. Uh, the reason I chose Kensei... Very, very simple. I think they are the kind of devs that when they make stuff, they will make it in a batch. And I think when they made Shinji, they definitely were just like, let's make all of the uh, Vizards. Let's just make all of them. And then when the opportunity arises to add them later on, let's just do it. And I feel like Kensei is a very easy one that you could slip in standard gacha. And it could be this version of him, or it could be the 
uh, the past version of him, although I suppose the version of Shinji we got is the newer one. So, probably not the past version. Probably be this version of Kense, but makes a lot of sense to me. You could just chuck him in this event anywhere, standard gacha or whatever. Bear in mind, we got a lot of standard gacha last year because I think we got two standard gacha to start us off in part one. Then we got a separate standard, like a boost gacha uh, for one of the events. So that's three. Then two more for part two. So that's five. And then two more for the Kimitsu and the Yaiba thing. Seven standard gacha units. So <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of spots to work with. Could be a lot of different characters. Uh, I have also chosen our Yume for a standard gacha spot. I really feel like, you know, I said before... Free to play protagonists, if they wanted to release a version 2 Kenta Hirono as like a special points event or whatever, an Aoi Yume could be the boost unit, similar to how we got Doko last year, and Shion was the boot, like the unit on the event that got boosted through the points or whatever. They could totally do that. Aoi Yume should be in the game by now. I know it's. I know Yume Senshi Wingman is like an older series, and most people don't give a shit, but the fact remains. It's one of the glaring omissions in the roster. It is one of two, at least, very important characters from this series. So if you're going to have the series in the game, our Yume should be in the game. That's just how it should be. And uh, I think she could be on the standalone gacha. Maybe Kensei on the part two gacha. Maybe Zora and Zebra on the part one gacha. You're probably wondering about the theme. There is none. I have not put any single thing because every time I try and make it fit to a theme that shit does not work and it might not work because i can't make it work or it might not work because the devs just don't follow the theme which has happened so many times they just don't follow the theme and uh i don't expect them to follow the theme i'm gonna be real with you i don't expect them to follow the theme that's just how they are um so if they do have some kind of theme whatever it may be uh, maybe one or two characters will fit it and the rest will just be kind of whatever. There have been times when it's been like loose themes, like with the duo units, there was a loose theme of the, the number two. Same with the first anniversary, the number one, we had the, uh, you know, the X number one swordsman Shanks and we had the number one hero All Might. Like there is, there's something there, but a lot of the time it's just like, fuck it, just here's a bunch of units. And I think that's going to be what this anniversary is. Just fuck it. Here's a bunch of units popular characters from popular series give us all your money and i'm kind of just fine with that <laughs> i'm gonna be real with you um next up another popular character from a popular series ryusui nanami from dr stone dr stone has just ended so this would be a perfect opportunity uh to cash in on that and add ryusui nanami i do think we'll get a dr stone feature festival number two at some point but i don't know when and I feel like he's an easy character to add and then you could always do like a version 2 or whatever. It's up to you. He could counter Francois. I mean, that could be a little thing. I don't know. But he's a character that needs to be added to the game. And then finally, talking about characters, we've got two more. Uh, let's start off with this one. Nento Dojin from Hoshinengi. I suspect that Hoshinengi, much like I mentioned with Toriko, I think there was going to be a Hoshinengi feature festival and whether that does indeed end up coming later or whether that has been repurposed in the same way the Toriko units were remains to be seen. But we know for a fact that there has been some Hoshinengi content that has come out on the Taiwan server separately from some Hoshinengi content coming out on the Japan server. And I suspect that there might be some kind of repurposing of these units. And if that is the case then that does open the doors for Nento Dojin to be added to the game. From what I have read of Hoshinengi, I do believe that this is potentially a limited character. However, Hoshinengi doesn't have a limited character yet. It has a Muso on the Taiwan version, but it doesn't have a limited character. So it's very tricky to pinpoint whether they would do it or not. Uh, probably the answer is no, they probably wouldn't. But assuming that there was a Hoshinengi feature festival and they have repurposed all these units, uh, yeah, why not? Make him a limited. Maybe in this event, why not? I don't see why not. You already can have Roger as a Muso. So whoever you release as a limited, they've just got to have a banging skill set and people will pull. There'll be so many people playing and so many people will want to pull. So why not Nento Dojin? 
Now, the next one is is interesting because I think this could be one of two things. Either one, we haven't had a Dark Heroes event in a while. Maybe part two of this event could be Dark Heroes. I think that is definitely on the cards. However, there's also the possibility that part three of the event which in the last couple of anniversaries has been like a mini event, specifically Kimetsu no Yaiba, but maybe for that mini event, and Kimetsu no Yaiba would be the obvious choice. They might do it again. I don't know what they would do it with because we've almost ma like done all the characters, but um, I'm sure they'll find a way. <laughs> I'm sure they will find a way. But I think that that little period, and they do a mini festival, there are a lot of options for what they can use. They need to take a specific part of a story that just works, you know, uh, by itself, separate from everything else. And in this case, I would recommend My Villain Academia from My Hero Academia. That arc stands alone by itself. You've got characters you can use as standard gats, you've got characters you can use as event units, you've got a character you can choose as a limited, and it just works by itself, separate from the rest of the story as its own little event. And I think that makes so much sense. Now, they might not do that. They might do Naruto and the Scarlet Springs. I mean, that works by itself. They might do any other number of series that have their own little arc that works by itself. They totally could. Or they might just do Kimusuni Aiba again, which seems likely. I think the one I would like to see most would not be My Villain Academia. It would instead, uh, be Jujutsu Kaisen Zero because I think Jujutsu Kaisen Zero would be like the, the timing would be incredible if they released that after the anniversary they would make so much money it is ridiculous because the, the movie has just come out the movie has just been out for people to watch and it's, going, it's doing numbers so just makes sense you adapt zero and then later you release the rest of the series you do a feature festival whatever now there is obviously some issues with certain series being added and we don't know what's going on with that and whether there's any particular reasoning behind that obviously jujitsu kaisen has showed up in a bunch of other gacha games but not in jump put your heroes and it's a little bit confusing as to why that may be i'm sure they have their reasons and we have predicted Jujutsu Kaisen being added numerous times and been wrong numerous times. However, in this particular case, uh, I'm speaking in more of a general sense. I'm not saying specifically, oh, they should add Yuji, they should add whatever, because they could do any part of the manga at any point, could be at any point on the roadmap. But the thing that I would do, if I was the developer, I would, I my job was to make bank. My only job was to make bank. I would say, look, Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, mini event, add Utah, adds like all the rest of his class as like gacha and event units, limited Gojo, and then print money. <laughs> just, just, just print money. Um, if you had Gojo versus Ghetto, like limited versus catastrophe, oh my word. Oh my word. And that still gives you plenty of space to later go, okay, well, we'll do more Jujutsu Kaisen and we've still, we can still add Sukuna and we can still add all the characters from the main Jujutsu Kaisen story. You can do a version 2 Yuta down the line as a limited. Gojo could be another limited down the line. Could be a Muso, could be whatever the hell you want him to be. Like, there's so many possibilities. And I know people always say like, oh yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen, but it's not coming because... Clearly, there's some kind of rights issue or whatever. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. I don't know, but I am speaking purely from the standpoint of if it was me, if I was in that room and I had to choose the best thing to make money after the anniversary, this is why I would choose. Because it has to be something big after the anniversary. Sure, it could be My Villain Academia, and I'd be totally cool with that. And I'd be totally cool with a limited Shigaraki. I think loads of people would spend money on that. So whether it's that, whether it's something else, who knows? If it's Kimetsu no Yaiba again, I'm sorry, guys. It just, well, there's nothing we can do. It's so popular. It could be version 2 Rengoku. could be anything. I don't know. Uh, I love Kimetsu no Yaiba, but they've really milked it as much as they can. And I don't, I don't dislike seeing Kimetsu no Yaiba stuff. It's just, 
it's, it's the same situation with like Naruto and whatever. It's just every single time. It's like, guys, take a break. Please. There's so, do you know how many series there are in Shonen Jump? Why do you keep going back to the same ones? I get it. It's profitable, whatever. But keep it sunny, yeah, but you've got, a, you've got a roadmap now. You can see when the new series of the anime are going to come out and whether release stuff alongside that. And other than that, focus on other shit. There's so much other cool shit to do. Um, speaking of other cool shit, I guess, let's talk more about the roadmap. I've talked a little bit about it, but um, I think, like I said, I think we could see an announcement of abilities and whatever. That was more of a miscellaneous stream thing, but Jujutsu Kaisen, anything Jujutsu Kaisen related on the roadmap, I'm happy. Gintama Feature Festival slash Gintama event of some description, I think is very likely. And then... There's some other things they have announced, like, at the side, they had some of the series that's going to get content. I don't think all those series are going to get feature festivals. Uh, one of the things on there was Naruto and the Scarlet Springs. Might not be a full feature festival. Like I said, might be a little event at the end of anniversary. Um, but there was some other stuff on there that I don't think is going to get feature festivals. But let's go through the ones that I do think will get feature festivals. Um, Prince of Tennis. It's about damn time. It's about damn time. I know you could say, oh, but, you know, they don't really like sports series and whatever, and they don't do that much for sports series. Do you know how many characters there are in The Prince of Tennis? It's gone on for so long. The sequel manga is, like, almost as long as the main one. It might have surpassed the main one. Like, that's how long we're talking. This manga's been going on for so long. I know you... I know Captain Tsubasa fans and, and all the other sports manga from back in the day. I'm sorry. The devs have forgotten about you, but... They mentioned Prince of Tennis on the roadmap, so I expect a full feature festival. Give me at least 90% of the Seigaku squad and then add a bunch of other characters in there as, as enemy bosses, please. Um, other series that they mentioned, Buso Rankin. Give us a Buso Rankin feature festival. Make it similar to the Siren one where it's like only one week, but it's like a packed out week. And then just make uh, limited Kazuki Muto just busted or whatever. And people will be happy. People will happily take part in that event. And the last one from that section is World Trigger. I think there should be a World Trigger feature festival. I think World Trigger was done a heavy injustice being a part of the last uh, crossover event, the Grand Alliance Festival last year. It just it, the event was far too long and it was so poorly paced and it just it wasn't thought out well compared to this crossover event which is too long and is hasn't been thought out very well but they've at least put some time into the idea of making it feel more like a crossover event you hacker show and hunter x hunter i know the series are by the same author i know obviously their worlds have a lot of similarities so i can kind of get how it would be easier to make those series crossover and the crossovers felt more natural plus I, I think it's a massive plus having gone on Yusuke as a free unit. I know the animations look limited worthy. Maybe they should have been unlimited. But you could have easily done a free version and a limited version. I mean, that's something you can work on down the line. You can work out. But I really feel like this event was a step forward in many ways. And then... I mean, I wouldn't even say a step backward. It's more like a, a falling down the stairs in other ways you know the the standard gacha is the stupidest shit i have ever seen ever it is so dumb six thousand rubies for a random new hero that would normally cost you 2250 rubies there is no justification for that whatsoever maybe if there was a choice ticket at the end i could understand Maybe if the like the steps were better, maybe if you've got a guaranteed five star every multi or something like that. Maybe if there were some discounts, maybe the price is brought down a bit. I don't know, but nine multis are they off their fucking heads? I cannot believe they thought that was a good idea. I know, yes, they're gonna make money off of it because these units are limited time only, which is fucking bollocks. But it's just it just baffles me. It just absolutely baffles me. Like, any time I see a gacha like that, I will not summon on it. I can't justify it. If they make improvements, if they make changes, maybe, sure. But it's just not justifiable. Especially because they have not been that generous with rubies during this event. There was no login bonus for this event. 
And then the standard catch units, they boost the drop rate on the Chew stage, but they haven't restocked the Chew store for the end of the event. So I, I was done. I was done with the store before the booster units came out. What was the point? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, a bit of a rant there. I'm sorry, but this event had so much potential and there were so many cool things about it and there were so many weird, shitty things about it. And it, it, it's a weird instance where there's sort of been some resonation throughout the community because a lot of people were really excited for this event and some people weren't that excited for this event. And when the full details came out, the feelings of this event came to converge. And it was beautiful because there were so many people that were excited but so frustrated and there were so many people that were going to skip anyway. And they were like, well, I'm definitely skipping. And it's just like... People came to realise with one another that, despite our differences, we can all agree that this is bullshit. And I think that's beautiful. But anyway, moving on, <laughs> moving on from that. Uh, this is interesting. I'll put these two together. Um, so, first off, I think this year, after the anniversary, we normally have a Goku Day event, which is like a Dragon Ball Feature Festival. It was a Super Dragon Ball Feature Festival last year. Not to be confused with Dragon Ball Super. Had nothing to do with Dragon Ball Super, but it was a Super Dragon Ball Feature Festival or Dragon Ball Super Feature Festival. I don't know. But I think this year we will not get a Dragon Ball Feature Festival. I think l the logical next step for Dragon Ball Feature Festival is one of two things. Well, one of three things, I will say. One thing is revisiting the Cell Saga, doing it proper and giving us a limited Super Saiyan 2 Gohan. Uh, one of them is going back to classic Dragon Ball, original era Dragon Ball, and doing that event properly. Give us a limited Goku that turns into the Great Ape. Give us like standard Gacha Yamcha, maybe Tien, or maybe Tien can be like an event unit and you can do standard Gacha Tien at a later point. Um, you know, you can revisit Ma Jr. So much untouched potential in that early part. Um, and the, the third option, which is the least likely, is moving into other Dragon Ball related content, whether that be Dragon Ball Super, whether that be Dragon Ball Minus, whether that be Dragon Ball GT, whether that be whatever. I know none of these things are canon to the main Shonen Jump manga. They did not get printed in the main Shonen Jump manga, so technically they should not be eligible to appear in this game but you know what at this point it just it just would not surprise me but i personally think that they will not do any of those options i think they will just do an ensemble event potentially or some kind of other event and then goku will appear in it now what that could be exactly i don't know and one thing i will point out is i would like to see a Dragon Ball and Dr. Slump crossover event. But the crossover event seemingly on the roadmap settle in before each anniversary. So before the anniversary and before the 0.5 anniversary. So if they were doing a Dr. Slump Dragon Ball event, it would most likely be just before the next anniversary, not just after this one, which is when, Dragon, when, when Goku Day is and Gohan Day and Goten Day. So... If that is the case, then would Dragon Ball get two slots on this roadmap? One as a Dragon Ball Feature Festival and one and drop Dragon Ball Dr. Slump? Or would they just skip Dragon Ball? I think they should skip Dragon Ball. <laughs> I personally, I cannot stand the idea of another standard Gacha Vegeta. Um, if you want to do, if you want to revisit like a, like a limited margin Vegeta, like I said before, if they want to do a Dark Heroes event, and maybe that overlaps with Goku Day, and we get like a limited margin Vegeta, and we get a free-to-play Goku that he counters, and you could get like a, a really good farmable Goku, I am down. I am 100% down. But, if we're being realistic, <laughs> uh, I don't feel like Dragon Ball has as much content to work with without constantly hammering away on version 2s. So if they do do Dragon Ball, I think they should go back to Classic Era. I think that's the best option. Uh, assuming that the, the post stuff, GT and Super and all that, is at off limits. Um, and then as for like the rest of 
rest of the Dragon Ball content, just do it at a later date, you know? Like, we don't need to have one every year. You could do, like, a Dragon Ball something this year for Goku Day, but you don't need to constantly do a full feature festival every time. Uh, that being said, we will get a One Piece event this year, and I think it'll be Wano. I have a feeling the fact that we got uh, Orobi and Onami earlier this year is a sign that... There are some Wano units that we are going to be seeing this year. I am very confident it'll be Wano. Maybe it'll be limited Eustace Kid. Maybe it'll be another limited Luffy. Maybe it'll be limited Osoba Mask Sanji. There are plenty of options. Maybe limited Yamato. I know so many people that would go nuts for a limited Yamato and would be happy to summon. Um, I, I'm pretty confident there will be a One Piece Wano feature festival. They could always do some other stuff. They could go back to East Blue. They could whatever. But we predicted this stuff so many times. And like with One Piece, uh, the only safe bet with the devs in terms of One Piece content is that there will be One Piece content. Uh, what it will be exactly and when it will be, who knows? But I'm pretty confident in a Wano feature festival this year. And I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, pretty, well, it's whatever. And then next up, we did talk about Jujutsu Kaisen. In terms of another new series I would like to see, uh, Mission Yozakura Family. Anything related to this, whether it's just announcing the series will have something included, uh, whether it is like a full feature festival, whatever it may be, I think they need to start talking about adding more new series in there was a time when it was not a big deal and they just used to do it all the time they don't do it anymore they need to get back on track you know there was this talk about the captain plan and i i theorized maybe it could be the introduction of captain abilities slash leader skills for the characters which would be a great thing to add with roger everything ties together it'd be really cool maybe it'll be something that the only gacha unit that has it is roger and then they introduce free-to-play characters with leader skills. And then later, they'll add more gacha and limited units with leader skills. But Roger could be the first one and the most powerful one. And maybe the free-to-play ones have it, but they're kind of weak. I think that would make sense. Um, but the thing is, right? What if Captain Plan is more a case of Fujikawa, who is the producer of the, of the game current producer anyway um where fujikawa has a new plan for the direction of the game and it's the captain's plan and it's going to lead us in a new direction for the game if that's the case what could we be seeing and i'm hoping the case is we're going to be seeing more new series the thing is they've tried to move away from spoiling anime by introducing co like when they introduce content in the game they don't want it to spoil an ongoing anime and that's why i kind of haven't mentioned chainsaw man because we know the chainsaw anime Chainsaw Man anime is on its way. It's like fully like we've seen scenes from it. We know it's coming uh, And there are plenty of other series where it's like they might get an anime Maybe it's been confirmed, but we haven't seen much of it, whatever But Yozakura family a hundred percent will get an anime at some point and The manga just slaps so hard. I'm sorry I just love it so much and it's the perfect series for Jump Booty because the way the characters are all broken down like you could you can see them immediately being gacha being limited being event units and it just works and i'd just be gassed for it now there's plenty of other series i could have put here like undead unlock uh um i'm trying to think of some other ones where i was like yeah that that banged really hard i want to read more of that um i'm struggling because i've recently reread like everything in shonen jump or like not reread but caught up to everything that's currently running in shonen jump my god i didn't reread everything in shonen jump no i i caught back up to everything that's currently ongoing in shonen jump except for elusive samurai which i was really struggling with it's it's so difficult to read um but i'm trying to think which series i roboco would be amazing in jump Uti. i know a lot of people are not a fan but like that's you know it's a gag manga it is what it is uh, I think that would work really well. I think Yozakura is probably the best option. Um, yeah, I don't know. But the, the point is, they need to work with some of the newer series, I think. And I think that'd be really cool. And I know you could say, oh, but any of these series can get cancelled. But it's like, so? We've got, game, we've got series in this game that have been cancelled or have only run for, like, one volume. And they're still in the game. So... Why not? Why not? 
Uh, next up, this one is something that should already be in the game. I don't know why it's not. And that is a Dragon Quest feature, first of all. What part of the story it covers? Doesn't matter. Which characters does it add? Doesn't matter. <laughs> like, we need a Dragon Quest feature, first of all. The anime has been ongoing. The anime has covered enough of the story that at this point, you can just add any of the early stuff from Dragon Quest as a feature, first of all. Admittedly, we do have a lot of the big characters, but certainly a lot of these characters get power-ups, get version 2s. There are some characters that are straight up missing that we can get added. There's so much they can do. And Dragon Quest really feels underserved. I'd like to mention Dragon Quest has been added to the Shonen Jump Vault. The first 15 chapters are on there now, but I think they're going to add the rest later. So, perfect time for, for us. Obviously, that doesn't really apply to Japanese fans. But, you know, I'm saying there's definitely some popularity there. With the anime, with the, with the manga getting properly published in the vault and stuff. Logically, it just makes sense. It just, you cash in... What, what's, what's the saying? You strike while the iron is hot. That's the saying. They've been doing it with Kimetsu no Yaiba, so why not do it with the other series that have hot animes out right now? It just makes sense. It just fucking makes sense. Um, what else have we got on here? Oh, yeah. Um, well, <laughs> I, I'm hoping they don't, but realistically, they will. I haven't put any Naruto stuff on here, which is really a stupid thing to do because naruto it's just gonna get something it's guaranteed 100 percent without fail whether it's during the actual anniversary whether it's on the roadmap whether they just announce it during the stream whatever it will get something i guarantee it um and as for kimitsu no yaiba the same can be said now what that will be i don't know i've been thinking for a long time we'll probably get a version 2 rengoku like it could be rengoku and then like a stage that just drops like just any character like it doesn't even matter what the character is and then they could have a catastrophe stage and it just gives you like the fire breathing emblem or whatever and yeah i have a feeling on kibbutz on the eye but they're gonna do that for every breathing style uh, whether it'll be a limited every time i don't know but i can imagine them giving us like a limited shinobu like, I know the one we've got is technically the one that should be the limited, but it's a standard gacha. But 100% they could do a version 2 and then do like an insect breathing emblem. Like, they could do it with basically all of the pillars. And I dare say they will do it. And it, I know they're just milking it dry. But again, strike while the iron's hot. I can't fault them for that. While I think it's dumb... The, we're getting so much attention on Kimetsu no Yaiba, and a lot of people would say it's not even that good a series. I, I enjoy it, but you know, I get what you mean. I, I understand what you're saying. Um, the anime has just popped off to an unreal level. I'm pretty sure during that Kimetsu no Yaiba, like we got 35 free multis during that Kimetsu no Yaiba release of uh, of uh, Uzui as the limited. You know, like it just seems like a no-brainer to me to just keep releasing Kimetsu no Yaiba units during big celebrations and give tons of goodies and you're just going to get so many people downloading the game, playing the game just for that character and the goodies hopefully keep them coming back. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. It, it is what it is and when it comes, it comes. So, all that's left really is a couple of little miscellaneous parts. Um, I don't think we're going to hear anything about Slam Dunk. Now, whether this is just me using, uh, what's the word? Reverse psychology? That's not really it. But <laughs> sometimes when I, I say something is going to happen, it seems like the opposite happens. So maybe that'll be the case this time. I don't know. But I really think at this point, there must be an issue with Slam Dunk. There's absolutely no reason why it shouldn't have been included at this point. Unless they're saving it for the 10th anniversary and... You know, Sakuragi, the number 10, is going to be the limited or the Muso for the 10th anniversary. Bro, we're coming up to the 4th. I'm not going to... A lot of people are not going to wait that long. Um, whether there is some other reason it will be added at some other point, who can say? I have no idea. But what I do know is they have shown no signs of any intent to add it. Even a couple of times it's been mentioned during live streams. And it's like, oh, maybe it'll be... No. It's not coming. <laughs> I don't know why. 
there's got to be an issue and I just don't think we're going to hear anything about it during this live stream. Um, and then next up, I don't think there's going to be any news on the sprite updates. I think the sprite updates is dead. I think every character that has had their sprite updated, it's just been a case of we'll just release a new version of the character instead of updating the old one. Maybe at some point, like a couple of years down the line, they will go back and they will update some of the old sprites. But it's looking a bit bleak. Some of these old characters, like, new, like the example I put there, Cobra and Cobra. Old Cobra is so old <laughs> and has been in the standard gadget pool for so long. Is like th there's no reason for them to put any effort to update their sprite. Admittedly, it probably wouldn't be that much effort, seeing as they've already remade the new one. And, you know, it would just be tweaks sort of thing. Like when the sprite is in Unity, which is what they, uh, well, I think they use Sprite Studio through Unity, but it doesn't matter. Um, when the sprite is in the pieces and they attach it to the rig and they have the set of animations that they play, um, and they have a special dot .ss something, I don't know, but that's like the animation file. That saves all the animations and then it's like, you could easily just make alterations to the part of the characters and like, you know, it, there would have to be changes obviously. But it's like, once the parts are there, say for example with Cobra, you've got the hair, you've got the face, a lot of the body parts are similar. Yes, you would have to change the arm, or maybe, like, in parts you'd have to change the arm. Uh, yes, you'd have to change the base costume, and yes, you'd have to change the base animations, but that is a lot easier than making a new character from scratch. Uh, so, I believe that at some point it might happen, but I think with the way things have gone in the last year or two of this game, I don't think we're going to hear anything about it today, and I don't think we'll hear anything about it anytime soon. By the time they announce it, most of the people that were here playing the game when they did initially say they were going to do it, uh, they will have stopped playing the game. <laughs> I think that's how long it's going to take. But I think eventually they have to do it because... Like, some of the characters you put, like, if you're a new player and you get a, a free multi and you pull and it's, like, all three-star and four-star characters, most three-star and four-star characters have absolutely horrific sprites. And the only ones you can tell who they are straight away are characters where, it, like, it couldn't be anybody else. Like, with Krillin. It, it just couldn't be anyone else. They need to update the three-stars and four-stars. They need to add some more as well. But, you know, that's a topic for another day, I think. But there, there's so much potential... If they just update some of these 2018 sprites, just so that if somebody's playing the game and they pull the character, they know who it is straight away. And they're just like, oh, it's him. Awesome. Or it's her. It's super cool. And I think it gives us room for revisiting some of those series. Like, if you make a really good sprite for, say, like, a, I don't know, what an example here. They gave us a new sprite from a character from Medica Box. It was the, you know, it was the first version of the character. Uh, in uh, we had K and we had uh, Ajimu. It was the first versions for both of those characters, but the sprites looked so much better than the orig original Medica box characters. It makes you want to see what would Medica look like in that art style. It would look amazing. She would look amazing. And all the other characters, what would they look like? They would look awesome. So maybe, maybe at some point, who knows? But I genuinely believe, no, they will not announce anything during this event. And the last slot, the most important one, no, not really. But I think we are going to see a new Awakening mechanic announced. What it will be exactly, I don't know, but I've been talking for a very long time about older characters falling off so much that they can't keep up with newer characters. And yes, they do periodically buff characters, but in, in some instances, it's like... You just can't win, <laughs> you know? We get some limited characters from even just last year, and their support abilities are now on standard gadget units. Like, that's how far the creep has gone in such a short period of time. So, yes, there will be buffs, and yes, there will be opportunities to add upwards revisions to these character skill sets that will be enough to make them 100% totally usable and good. 
But for some of the older units, they're just a lost cause. Like, you could buff them three, four times. They're, it's just, it's not going to work. They're just too old and too... Too shitty. <laughs> too shitty, I guess. Uh, but I, I think we need a new awakening mechanic. How it will be implemented exactly, I don't really know. Whether it would be, like, six star plus, or whether it would be seven star, or whether it would just be a separate awakening altogether. I think, you know, we mentioned the sprite updates before. Like... That would be a really cool way to like revisit characters you know like say if i've got a picture of sayer there like if you added a new limited sayer and you made it so that that new limited sayer could awaken with these special medals from this event but for a smaller number of those medals you could awaken the old sayer and the old sayer would get a newer sprite that looks better and would get much better skills, but still not too good because he's still an old standard gadget unit. Like, that would be an opportunity to breathe some life into an older character and would certainly work with older limiteds. Um, now, whether or not they would do that, I don't know. That That is obviously based very heavily on the Dokkan Awakening system, but it's certainly something I would like to see. And that's my wishlist bingo for the fourth anniversary live stream. Uh, let me know what you guys are looking forward to from the live stream, what you're hoping to see from the 4th anniversary in the comments. Uh, but until the live stream, until we know more about the anniversary and the countdown or whatever, uh, not much else to say. So I will see you guys next time.